Hi everyone, welcome back to workshop. And <laughs> no, it's not repair time again, unfortunately. It's production time. I decided to, to make another batch of PDVS2 minis. I haven't had any on sale for months and months now because the semiconductor crisis that uh, most of you be aware of uh, caught me out. And not only was I unable to get parts, but the parts that were available were like double the cost and it just wasn't worth uh, going ahead and trying to buy the parts and uh, possibly double the price of the PDVS2 Mini, which is about the only device that I make at the moment. So uh, things have changed a little bit. I've managed to get parts at a decent price and I'm just doing a bit of a stock check now. As you can see, I've got parts all over the workbench here. I'm uh, currently decanting them into my uh, project parts box all filed away in anti-static bags ready to get on with production so I just thought I'd roll the camera uh, right through the process of uh, production of the PDVS2 Mini and of course the start is arranging all the parts I've got the PCBs here I've got to say a PCB way the main board and the charger board here so I've got plenty of them I've had them sitting for months and months now uh, so now is the time to get going and get manufacturing PCB way is your one-stop solution that's been expanded from their large variety of PCB prototyping solutions to 3D printing, CNC machine work and sheet metal fabrication. PCB way also has a growing community on their site where it's become an open platform for makers to exchange and share their ideas including the PCB way store where some of the hottest modules can be purchased. I've been using PCB Way for years for my own products. Always reliable, always quality and always on time. So I'm part way through arranging all the parts as you can see and I normally work out of this cardboard box. Everything is singled out into their own bag, all the different parts. Dead easy just to go and pick up a bag. But of course the parts don't come like that. Quite often they come in uh, loose bags like this maybe five items per bag while well, I cut them all open and put them into my own bag and I actually reuse DigiKey bags they're about the only supplier of bags that uh, you don't have to cut open they've got this resealable uh, top to them so they're really good for uh, just uh, filling up the parts again ready for the next batch as you can see I've got plenty of uh, inductors um, PTCs, all sorts of things. The LM399AH is there and I do actually have some 3D printed parts that I need to make. I've got a batch here that I've already uh, printed off and these are the uh, cover for the LM399 and conductive PLA that is mounted underneath the LCD. So I'll just get on with uh, arranging all the parts and once that's done I can actually sit down and start pasting off the boards and assembling all the circuit boards by hand. Well going through my stock, finally got my spreadsheet all up to date so I know exactly what I've got and actually what I'm missing and I am missing a couple uh, of uh, low temp co resistors, the 22.1k 2 ppm per degrees C resistors. They are on back order but they should be here uh, I think less than a month so I'm just going to carry on. Uh, I've got some that I can get going with and uh, I've got the stencils already so let me clear the bench and let's get down to PCB assembly. Okay let's paste up some PCBs I've actually already started, so this is number two in this little batch and I've already aligned it, uh, one strip of masking tape down this side here and uh, the other side's open and what I'd like to do is put a little bead of paste along the top edge of the short side Need a little bit more here there we go and then I hold down the stencil at the left hand side so it's a secure in position and then drag it once across the stencil once and once only 
and that's it done and I'll use my tweezers to lift it up and just pull the board out it's a little bit tight and there we have a perfectly pasted circuit board so I usually build them in batches of six this is number two pasted up so let me go off and do the other ones and there we go six PCBs pasted okay and the next part of the process is actually assembling the PCBs now as I said I like to do six at a time purely just because it's nicely laid out in two rows of three here and it's within reach for reaching across the boards to the first board etc it's all within uh, hands reach without having to compromise maybe getting an elbow on a board or something like that or trying to uh, get into the middle of a board uh, from either the top or the bottom it's very easy with two rows of three like that being comfortable uh, during hand assembly especially when you've got a lot of boards to do is absolutely key now what I also have to hand is my bill of materials, my parts list here which I've got nicely laid out with the uh, identifiers down the left, the quantity and the actual component. Now I've gotten so used to uh, assembling these I kind of know what I'm doing uh, as I assemble them I kind of know which resistor values go where because of course um, the values of the components are not on the PCB they should never be uh, marked on the PCB um, just in case a component value has to change later on down the line you are then committed if you actually put the component value on the board however I've done as many of these in the past I do kind of know what component values go where especially the ICs sometimes the resistors and capacitors I might refer to the bomb but for the most part I can just sit and go through the board and assemble it now the first parts I like to get done are the resistors and the capacitors so I've got my little box of resistors here I've got everything decanted in here for the most part the normal tolerance resistors anyway there is precision resistors elsewhere in bags that I specially order but these are the jelly bean resistors here and I can just open up the various compartments and drop them straight onto the board so let's get going now what I like to do, I'm just off camera here, I'm just pulling out some uh, 9k resistors and I usually like to drop them onto the bench just the other side of the boards and I use this area here I'll put all my ICs, resistors, whatever onto this area here and then move them onto the boards so I've got some 9k resistors all ready to go so let's start putting them on the board. Now you'll see that I'm actually using my thumb to steady the tweezers. I could just pick up the components and drop them onto the board but you probably find especially after a lengthy assembly session you, you're not going to be that steady uh, especially at the end of the tweezers and you've got to be reasonably accurate in dropping these components onto the board so it's quite tiresome to try and manipulate that component and land it in exactly the right place without too much waving around of the of the hand like I'm I'm showing you here so what I like to do and I've gotten so used to doing it on workbench I'll just use a finger or a thumb lay it on the end of the tweezers and that just locks that component it's not going to move around, it's not going to wave around and I've got the fingers here, a bit like guitar players will do actually and it's there on the workbench, there steadying that there and I can then just locate the component there and I'll just go right across the board all six of them, placing those components and that's those six resistors on, we can move on to the next component but I'll not bore with you that I'll come back once we're ready to go to the next stage.
Well, there we go. Six boards assembled. Uh, and the more you do it, the faster you get. And uh, well, yeah, but I don't stress myself throughout the day doing them. I'll maybe do six in the morning, six in the afternoon and six in the evening with a lot of time in between for doing sorts, all sorts of other things. But let's go and pop them into the reflow oven now. What I usually do is four or six at a time. It just really depends uh, on the size of the board, that sort of thing, because I do have the charger boards to do as well. So there we go, I've got four boards on the tray. I like to use the centre of the oven because it can be slightly cooler right up against the edges and I don't really want to take any chances. So four boards it is. Close the tray. Select my profile and off it goes. And I know you can't see this too clear but the profile graph is on the LCD on the front of the oven and there's a thick line of following that profile and it'll show any deviation from that in regards to temperature and you've obviously got time along the bottom and you've got three indicators here uh, whether the fans running whether whether you're actually heating at that moment in time or cooling and sometimes as it deviates that profile as it goes up and down uh, the heat or the cool lights may indicate but as you can see here I've got the heat and the fan uh, it's obviously ramping up temperature and over the right hand side on the display is the actual target temperature and the actual temperature recorded and above that the profile number that I'm running and the time. So I've uh, programmed in a profile here uh, straight from the data sheet more or less from the unleaded uh, solder paste that I'm using and I usually get quite good results with that. So I'll just leave it running and uh, wait till it's cooled down once it's finished and I can remove the boards. And here it is in the ramp down phase now, we're around about the 100 degrees C mark. As you can see it's well into the uh, ramp down side of the graph on the display. Now this is a T937 uh, Chinese reflow oven. I've had really, really good experience with this oven. It differs from its cheaper ones. I can't remember the number uh, because this one does have a vent exhaust at the back, uh, not just the fan intake, it's got a vent output which in my case I've directed out through the brickwork of the workshop into the outside world. So uh, with the oven working in the workshop here I don't smell very much at all, there's absolutely no fumes at all. Maybe slight leakage of a slight smell coming out from the gap on the front of the oven but really very, very little and certainly very, very safe.